All right. Good morning and God bless you on this, the 30th day of June. June 30, y'all. June. Was I supposed to be looking at this this morning? No. Okay. I was trying to figure out if I was supposed to be in my Amplified with you all today. But I thank and praise the Lord for this day that the Lord has made. And um, I was um, just on online with uh, listening to uh, Bishop Reginald Davis out of North Carolina. And if those of you, if you need prayer and encouragement, I suggest that at 630 you kind of log in with Bishop Reginald Davis uh, for that morning prayer. I was enjoying it and everything. So, yeah, let's get energized by each other. So let's pray. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this morning, right now, Lord God, thank you. There are so many, Lord, that are standing, sitting, kneeling, praying in the need of your Holy Spirit to be upon them, within them, and around them. Lord God, there are many people who are living and walking in dangerous situations. And I pray right now, Lord, that you will be a hedge of protection around them, Lord Jesus. There are individuals who are in hospice care right now, Lord God. Individuals that will soon be going into hospice care. Individuals in hospitals, nursing homes, Lord God, or even in their own homes. The sick ones, Lord God, those that don't, don't even realize that they have a illness that is brewing within their bodies, Lord. But I pray right now for the souls of these individuals, Lord. I pray that you will bless their souls, Lord God, sanctifying them, Lord, healing them and delivering them. Lord God, I pray right now for my mother and other mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, nieces, nephews, aunts and uncles, cousins, grandparents, Lord Jesus, all over this world. Lord God, those that are um, blessed individuals, those that are righteous, walking in holiness, and even those that are not, because I know that as long as they have breath, they have a chance to repent of their sins. So, Lord God, I'm not giving up on nobody. I pray right now, Lord, that you would just have your way in all of our lives. Bless every soul all over this world, Lord God, with your Holy Spirit. Bless us, Lord God, and keep us. But most especially, Lord God, those that are, you know, downtrodden, they, they discouraged, Lord. Sometimes, mm, yes, there are so many that are discouraged, Lord. So I pray that somebody somewhere, even if I can, be of an encouragement to somebody. Lord God, those ones that are having migraine headaches, sinus headaches, headaches because of whatever. Those that are stressful right now, Lord God. Those that are undergoing something, Lord. Just whatever that it is. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, have mercy upon them, Lord God and bless us as only you can and will. Lord God, remember and bless and protect our armed forces members, both active duty and retired. Those that are inactive, Lord God, and can be reactivated, Lord God, bless them. Bless them even when they come home from battlegrounds, Lord God, that they will leave the battlegrounds behind and not bring it home with them. Lord God, bless the gang members all over the world, Lord Jesus. Drug dealers, Lord God. Those that are selling people and whatever. Our police officers, Lord God, I ask you to bless them as well. Our preachers and teachers, Lord God. Our nurses and doctors, technicians, Lord God. Our food service workers, Lord Jesus, bless them. Bless and encourage, Lord God, even the garbage men the janitors all over this world, Lord God. Bless them, Lord Jesus. All of these people are so important, Lord God. Our farmers, Lord God, especially our dairy farmers, Lord Jesus. Just have your way in their lives, Lord. Have your way in their lives. The people that are producing our food, growing crops, Lord God. Some of them are growing crops, Lord Jesus, in not good soil, and some of them are poisoning the soil with all kinds of... Mm, chemicals and whatnot. But Lord God, bless them. Bless them. Give us all wisdom and the knowledge in order to learn how to do the things that uh, for some people come so naturally. 
Lord God, the inventors, Lord Jesus, let them stop their inventing of wicked things, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, I was going to get carried away there. Woo, going to get ready to get carried away. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I was getting ready to get carried away there for a minute. I think I'm going to have to go and, and just have a prayer session somewhere. <laughs> but anyway, the works of darkness, the works of darkness. Okay, let me let me get with it. And I and as I was studying, is the works of darkness moral or spiritual destitution? Okay, my computer has turned off again, y'all. So let me know if you can see me. And if you can see me, I'm going to go on. So let me know if you can see me. Because mine is saying that I am having trouble playing this video. But if you can see me and if you can hear me, let me know. All right? Because I'm going to keep on going anyway. But the works of darkness, the moral or the spiritual destitution. And when we are talking about destitution, we're talking about that emptiness. Thank you. Thank you, sis. I'm going to go on. That, that emptiness, that depletion, that poverty, that lack, that need. And this workers of workers works of darkness is in that place where we are we need this we need to see we need to hear we need to feel jesus okay we need it we need it we need it all right so i'm gonna go on and and the first scripture is first john chapter two and uh and I want to talk to you a little bit about this darkness. In 1 John chapter 2, let me get my pen here. It's in, let's start at verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light nigh shineth. Now, this, this, this darkness, this darkness. Now, we're talking about this place, this place of moral or spiritual destitution here. It says, he that's... He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now. Now look at that. How can you say you love something or somebody and yet you hate somebody else? All right. Oh, Lord have mercy. Mm. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. It says, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Why? You know, but he that is that hate of his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness have blinded his eyes. Darkness, that spiritual darkness. And then it's the same as a physical darkness. You wait until midnight and you turn off all the lights. And if the if the moon is not shining, if there's not a street light around, you don't have a night light around or something like that, there is gonna be complete darkness. And you can stumble around. Some of us remember our houses and, and we can walk, navigate. But if you're like in a, another place and that darkness come and you can't see, you kind of get a little uneasy, don't you? You start feeling your way around. Well, that's the same way, hallelujah, in a spiritual thing, in a spiritual thing, y'all. Mm -hmm, in a spiritual thing. You feeling your way around. So if you're walking around in hatred, you're walking around um, in darkness. That's a spiritual thing. So then I went to 1 John. I kept staying there and I went to chapter 4 because now you're dealing with love. In verses 7 and 8 of 1 John chapter 4, you're dealing with love because if you hate your brother, that means you don't love, right? Look at what verse 7 and 8 says here. 1 John 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. You see, how can you hate your brother? See, how can you hate and you say you love God? And that's all in water there. You can shake it up. It may look like it's, it's, it's beginning to, to, to gel together. But you leave it alone, it's still going to separate. See, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. You got some people that's, that's blinded right now with hatred. Blinded with it. Hating. Hating. Can't forgive. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another Bible study. Can't forgive. Then I'm going to go on down here to 20 and 21. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Now, I just did a, a lying, uh, a Bible study about lies, right? Was that it? I think that was it. 
think that was it. But anyway, dealing with lies. For he that loveth not his brother whom he have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? Did I read that right? For he that loveth not his brother whom he have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? You're just telling a lie. You're going around and hating people because of their color, hating people because of their whatever, you know, they just don't suit you. You're hating them because they're Democrat or a Republican. You're hating them because they eat meat and you don't. And you're hating them because they, you understand what I'm saying? In verse 21 says, and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. All the faults, all the thorns, glory be to God. You see, you got to love it. And so we're going to deal with this. We're going to deal with this. Now, the works of darkness. I went to chapter five of Ephesians just to figure out. I said, now you're going to talk about darkness. I want to see what the works of darkness are. Ch Ephesians chapter five, 11 verses here. I might not read all the 11, but you, you'll get the gist here. The first thing that I want to say is, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. You see, again, we're hitting you with this love because hatred is a darkness. Hatred will cause you to find yourself cast into the lake of fire. That's what hatred would do. But he says here in verse three of chapter five, Ephesians, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. If you have a problem with your flesh, lusting sensually after, because I got to be kind of careful because I got my little young folks on here. But yeah, you old folks, y'all know what I mean, sensually. And the younger people, they're going to look that word up. But if you got your flesh itching and scratching for somebody else that don't belong to you and that you ain't supposed to be with, you're in error. You're in darkness. It says, don't let it be named among you. Mm -hmm. Neither filthiness. And I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up this stuff right here. Foolish talk and jesting, which are not convenient, but rather of giving of thanks. A lot of times you got people, they so full of jokes that they forget to give God thanks. So I looked up the word foolish and it's like you being silly. You're not being wise. I looked up that jesting part. You got a humorous twist to something. You always so full of laughter. But the thing of it is, there's a time when we got to be serious. We got to be serious. And don't be making light and making fun of the word of God or of the people of God. Yes, some funny things do happen. Funny things do happen. But God is able to, you know, to kind of, get us to the right point. Look at verse five. For this ye know that no whoremonger, somebody that is indulging with prostitutes, nor unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater, a person who is always worshiping idols, got somebody else up on the high list other than God. You done place somebody else in the position of the highest honor and you give God what's left over. No, 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 ma'am, no, sir. No, ma'am, no, sir. And that's it. And, and, and then it, it, it's kept going. So no whoremonger, no unclean person. You know what unclean means. It's contaminated. You know what that means. So you got an unclean and a covetous man, an idolater. They don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. They don't have that inheritance. So you know and I know already that they are headed toward the lake of fire. All right? They're headed there. So they're living in darkness. They're living in darkness because they're living beneath the privilege that God has placed before them. All right. Then I said, all right, now I, I, I dealt with that. So now I want you to cast off those works of darkness. So I went to Romans chapter 13 and here in verse 12, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Now, I'm going to tell you something. 
a lot of people think that I, I, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I went somewhere where I knew that nobody knew me. I was in Okinawa, Japan. And I was walking down what we call Gate 2 Street and, and you know, looking at the shops because the shops were open. And it was just a bunch of us from church. And here I am walking. And um, I don't know if it's still going, but it says it's still live. And anyway, here I am. I'm just walking and walking. And after a while, this, this tall guy kind of eased up on me. And I was like, okay, he looks kind of good from what I could see because I couldn't see his face. And by the time the light hit his face and hit my face, we looked at each other. And he's like, Robin. And I said, Tyrone. Now, here it was. It was darkness, right? We're walking in darkness. And then when we got to a, a street, you know, got to a, a store, the light hit. And it was somebody I knew from my hometown. Now, who would have thought? You can, you might think you're getting away. I, I, I just said that because of the darkness part. You might think that you're hiding. But you're not hiding because God is everywhere. Now, what if I was doing something other than being you know, just me, we walk and we just window shopping. What if I was doing something else? This young man who knew me from when I was in high school, that knew that I had gotten saved while I was in high school. Here I am jumping and shouting in church. Here I am trying to encourage him to come to church. What if I was doing something wrong? Look at the testimony. But see, I was, we would just come from church. So, you know, I, I was doing, I, I wasn't doing anything wrong, but I was young and single and hopefully we could find her, I could find a husband and all that kind of good stuff. But see, look at that. It says, let us, what? Cast off the works of darkness. Now I was, we, I wasn't lurking around trying to find a husband. I, we was just walking and that just happened to, um, you know, yeah, yeah. But anyway, this, the thing is you got to cast off the works of darkness. Let's just go ahead and, and, and get that over and done with. Okay, let me go on with verse 13 and 14. It says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. You know what that means. And chamberling, this in wantonness and strife, envying. You know what these things are. And if you don't know, okay, I'll, 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 I'll help you out. But in other words, raising all kind of what the old people said, Cain, when they didn't want to cuss. Y'all just out there raising all kind of cane. You up there making all that noise and cussing and drinking and, and just acting a fool and you da 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 da, you know, going on like that. These are the things we need to let go of. That type of a lifestyle. That does not, what data says, that does not compute. Yeah, that does not compute. How can you be a child of God and you still living in your nasty, filthy flesh? I go to church. I don't bother nobody. I, you know, you're always filled with the I don't do's what you don't do. But is God pleased with you? Okay, that's the question. Is God pleased with you? All right, come on. And so these things, you got to cast these things off. But what you going to put on? What you going to put on? Look at verse 14. I'm still in Romans 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you put the Lord Jesus Christ on with filthy hands? No, but you can go with him with filthy hands and ask him to save you. You can go to him with filthy hands and a filthy heart and ask the Lord to forgive you. You can go to him with filthy hands and a filthy heart and ask him to save you. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And he will save you. Glory be to God. Ooh, thank you, Father God. All right. Glory, glory, glory. Ooh, yes, Lord. Mm, yes, Lord. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh. Stop giving yourself a way out. Well, you know, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. God knows my heart. Y'all better cut it out because God will say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Look here now. He's going to tell you, he says, to fulfill the lust thereof, you need to not to make excuses for your bad behavior. You don't let your children get away with it. Why are you going to try and shove that up in God's face and say, well, look at you made me. So you know how I am. <laughs> yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff. I've heard a lot of stuff. Oh, I've heard a lot of stuff. But the Lord made me like this. And that's just who I am. And that's how I'm going to go. All right. You keep it up and you're going to find yourself. You know, I, I haven't read Revelations 20 in a while here. So let me go on to Revelations 20. Y'all might forget. 
Let's see here. Which one haven't I read? Let's see. Let's go on to 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Look at here. He says, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. What kind of works are you working? Are you still in your sin? Trying to make God um, accept you? Is that what you're doing? I'm going to let you know right now, he ain't going to accept it. He's not going to accept sinfulness. No, he's not accepting it. He's done told us to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. He's already said, he's already told us that Jesus Christ came to save uh, his people from their sins. He's already told us that it was the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, that he shed for us. He shed his blood. When I saw that in scripture, I was like, oh, wow. I was so excited that I found it. And I was like, oh, I got, I got to make sure I, I keep that scripture. His blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Why we plead the blood so much? Oh, because you go into him with filth. Look at here. It's in Revelations chapter one, and it is verse five. I want you to make sure that that scripture is a scripture that you keep highlighted or a card with it. Listen to it. Revelations 1, 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, he rose again, did he not? It says, and the prince of the kings of the earth. He is even over the prince of the air, which is Satan. He's over him, Jesus Christ. He says, unto him that loved us. Look at that. Love again, right? You've got to love. And washed us from our sins in his own blood. Who shed their blood for you? Satan sure didn't shed no blood for you. As a matter of fact, he's going to bleed you out. Revelations 1.5. That should be our go-to scripture from now on, right? All right, let's pray. Let me let you go. It says, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Glory be to your name. Let this day be the day of salvation for somebody somewhere. Oh, Lord, save us. Lord God, heal us. Lord God, deliver us. But most of all, Lord God, let us obey you in all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Like I said, I can't see what's going on. And I hope this video will continue to play. And I pray that the Lord has given you some meat today to go ahead on and just enjoy. All right. So God bless you this day, every day. This is your missionary, Sister Robin Brooks. Peace be unto you and God bless you. All right. All right. Take care. Let's see. All righty. All right, Lord. You know what, Lord? I just praise you. Mm. Oh, God, I just praise you. But that's all right. Oh, let me finish.